hello making a video in a lovely afternoon under the lovely afternoon sky it's blue and the sun in the evening shining into the treetops it's very very beautiful it's very very gorgeous i very much enjoy this and i love making videos because then I have this imagination as, as if I have friends. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is a self-made hoodie I made. Sort of like a Till Eulenspiegel hoodie. <clears throat> it's like a middle-aged jester type of hat. <clears throat> and I love it very much. I love the material. I love the color. And um, I have my self-made pants on and hopefully some a little bit matching clothes, matching to the pants and the hat. The pants has many different colors in it. So I love it. I love play of shape and colors. It's just... My favorite, most favorite thing is that's what my brain is geared towards, to work with colors and shapes. And it's so nice. And I'm going to continue with my artwork after making this video. But I just wanted to make this video, just wanted to talk a little bit before the sun goes down. wanted to talk a little bit about empowerment because that's the most important subject there is. And I want as many people as possible to get into it, to think about it, to introspect. This is very important. The path within is the path towards the light, you know, towards love and light and art and infinity and growing, a growing movement, you know, a true growing movement. So <clears throat> what I see on the internet Every day I see people who are of people of all walks of life, really all walks of life, young, old, uh, different skin colors, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, also different religious backgrounds and so on. I see what they all have in common is, is this unempowerment state and this looking up to someone looking up to and looking up to the government that's the that's really that's that's the that's the epitome of unempowerment is to say the government has to provide for us and they're not doing their job and they are and they are and they are shape-shifting and they are <laughs> And they are doing some rituals in the Redwood Forest. And they are doing this. Or, you know, Bill Clinton had been accused of this <laughs> during one of his speeches. And he said, <laughs> and he said to that guy, he said, he said, you should go out there into the Redwood Forest. That will do you a lot of good. You get some fresh air into your brain. <laughs> oh, that made that. <laughs> that made that guy so mad that he started to have a total rage attack, like a total temper tantrum rage. He just co went completely lost it, that guy in the audience who attacked Bill Clinton. They ha actually had to come, the guard people had to come, and they had to tackle him down and get him out of that, out of the audience room. I mean, it's just... It's just Bill Clinton just stood there and it's just like, what's going on? What's going on with those people? You know, it's just amazing. It's just incredible. But Bill Clinton having the upper hand and the upper IQ knows how to handle those type of people. So, yeah. Um, it's always, you know, unempowerment. It's like, like the worst type of unempowerment is when people say the government or they are trying to 
cut down on the population, you know, like, first of all, <laughs> it's completely reversed. Um, the government has a lot of infiltrators, like, those are the people who are first in line to get into these jobs, you know, the infiltrators from big corporations, because when they have their their filaments in government, they can control it in the way that serves their corporation, right? And what's what serves their corporation the most is if there is are as many humans as possible. So Bill Gates, for example, also, you know, they want as many people, or Mark Zuckerberg, they want as many customers as they can possibly get their hands on. Okay? So that's why they take our tax money and support churches that nicely manipulate people, make people do walk for life, you know, in quotation marks, life, you know. Not all life, it's only human life, the little human that are this size, you know. And it's to total bullshit. You know, that's what Penn and Teller really need to make an entire film about in the bullshit series. It, the total bullshit is this is is this pro-life type of shit that is totally it's brainwash it comes from the christian religion and it just causes misery and suffering and it makes teenage girls have uh, have give birth you know when they're totally not ready and all that shit and even there are even people who want women to carry out a pregnancy after they had been raped and those type of people are also in government and and it's just a, a big fat disaster okay but the government is not out to get you and certainly not out to cut down on the human population okay and that's what i always hear and guess where the, those conspiracy theories are coming from they come straight from those corporate corporations, the corporate summit, the market psychologists that they hire, you know, how, and they, they have summit meetings and, and they discuss on how to keep the population growing to the fullest extent at all times and how to keep people as gullible as possible. Okay, those are the things they discuss, not shape-shifting, not, they don't go into the redwood forest. I don't think these people have ever been in a forest or, or, or has been putting fresh forest air into their lungs, actually, ever, you know, they, they're, they're hanging out in uh, neon-lighted conference rooms where they can find out how they can how they can scam people the most. Yeah, that's what's going on, unfortunately. You know. So no, they want as many people as possible. They want everyone to carry out a pregnancy. They want to put miserable lives into the world, no matter how much they suffer. So they have consumers. They, it's all about the more consumers, the better profit maximization. That's basically the bottom line, you know, profit maximization. Okay. I want people to know this. And those people who do this shit, they are, they snicker behind your religiosity. Okay. They snicker about this. They go, Oh, are people dumb motherfuckers. Yeah. Are they gullible? you know, to, to buy all of this hook, line, and sinker, what we're presenting to them, you know, all of our incentives for the churches to keep them nice and dumb. They laugh about you, about this, you know. So, yeah, there are not the best folks out there, but you know what? If for anyone who's complaining, like, the government is doing this to us, and how dare they... First of all, there is no the government. The government consists of people. Most humans are assholes. Thus, most people in the government are assholes. Okay, just a 
That's just a fact of life. Okay, so if you are complaining, any the, of those unempowered people, of those uh, complainers and whiners out there, you know, if you are complaining that it's not run right for this or that, then why don't you roll your sleeves up and sign up for it and go into the government and become the government okay be part of it go run for office work your way into it i know it's difficult for someone who is not known you know uh, and if you are a caring person you won't stand a chance but if you are a real motherfucking total piece of crap <laughs> and you are only in it for to trick people and to make money then yes you get your red carpet rolled out for you then then the corporations will come and hey yeah we can make her sign anything or her, him so that's very easy for anyone who doesn't care who's just totally on the take yeah. for those people it's very easy to get in because that's what they want and if you happen to have just the right skin color and just the, just the right looks and uh, will be just the right candidate to take the votes away from that candidate who might win and who also cares then you might stand a chance, okay? But it's very simple. Everything is very simplistic, much more simplistic than those tin hatter conspiracy theories, okay, that are all hating the Freemasons and the Skull and Bones and the Rotary Club and all of this. I know people in the Rotary Club. I know people in the Club of Rome, okay, that those are all these, you know, those elite type of conglomerations of professional people that get together that it, I think it started in order to, to make the community better, that somewhere has its roots in, let's get our minds together and brainstorm and so on. And then it became corrupt just as religions do, you know, just as almost any kind of institution becomes corrupt at, the, at some point. And then they collaborate on how to do profit maximization again for the, this or that corporation and they and this corporation will come in and say hey uh, let's make a deal here I will let's tweak this here a little bit so I can have more income and let's have more people so we can have more customers and let's do this and it's always geared in that direction okay there is no hocus pocus involved at all. It's just, I mean, some of them might might do some hocus pocus. I have no idea. But it's the the bottom line incentive here is always greed. It's always how can we gain more power and more political power, more financial power, more financial gain, and so on. So the entire banking system had just gone completely out of control with this. and But it's going to come down. It's going to, like everything, like every dynasty has come crashing down in history. So were the Rothschilds. This is just, that's evolution. That's a natural development. And... I personally have no problems with the Rothschilds. If it wasn't the Rothschild family, it would be some other family. It would be the Green Childs or the Blue Childs or whatever. It would be always someone who would you know, take up that niche. You know that it's there's tons and tons of market niches that require some brainy people, and the brainy people will seize those opportunities and they will take that on and they will provide for themselves you know usually not much for others but there are people in the Rothschild family like David the Rothschild from England who are very strong and devoted environmentalists and who are speaking and who are constantly talking to large audiences and who are 
constantly involved in making the, the world greener and better and safer for all. So there are some people, there's a number of people in the, in the Rothschild who want to make the world better with the influences, with the connections and with the the knowledge and the in, the IQ that they have, you know. So they want to use it for to make the world better and they are Okay, you bet they are. They are and they can do a whole lot. They can do a whole lot more than some uh, ant of activism like myself could, you know. So, and there are some people who do it and who make the best out of it as well. If they didn't, the world that we have right now would not look like this. It would already look like this video game where everything is trashed. So those are the few people. And Donald Trump is part of this group of good people who care and who want to make the world better and who don't want trash and who don't want everything to become a total chaos. Okay. So I think Donald Trump is a very good person and angel. So I know a lot of you are not going to be agreeing with me on this, but that's okay. Yeah. We don't all have to agree on everything. That's also, that's an, another misconception. I don't even want people to agree with me. Like, I agree with everything. No, I, I want you to go out there and find out for yourself, you know. Maybe you have, you're skeptical about it. Maybe you disagree and you're skeptical and, and you, but what I want you to do is instead of just disagreeing or agreeing, I want you go out there and, and check all of this for yourselves and make sure that maybe make sure that this is true or this is not true or just check the facts you know find out test things test things out and then come to your own conclusions and maybe if you do this and bring that information back to me or back to your friends or back to each other one and a crisscross then we can have conversations then we can have discussions and we can all do much more self-researching, self-searching, reading, lots of reading, not being entertained all day long, but lots of reading and researching, con context researching. That's really how any brain learns the fastest because that's learning with incentive. You know, that's learning where you are hungry for knowledge, really hungry for knowledge. That's what Judy Krishnamurti is talking about. You can only learn when you're really hungry, he said. What he means, hungry for knowledge. So, and you have something in mind and you are really, this. you have a specific theme that you're researching. And then researching becomes very interesting and very exciting and very much fun not like back in school where everything was completely splintered out of context and nothing made any sense so that's why you know when you are researching on your own it's it's very much fun it's very invigorating it is it's it it really opens doors, it, it opens insights also, you read between the lines, you bring in your own memories of whatever and you compare it and you, you ask questions and you dig into finding the answers to that and that's, that's how we really proceed in finding out the truth about the world and everything. So I want people to come out of their unempowerment and to stop complaining about, oh, they didn't give me enough money or the government is doing this or they're not giving enough or my parents or, or whatever your, you know, you, what, whoever gives you something or whoever is or your boss or whatever, you know. You need to become in charge of your 
own lives and make the best out of it as possible and become a, your own researcher and empower yourselves. Okay, you guys take care. Bye-bye.